What's our campaign slogan, Sissy? Happy days are here again. In the midst of the Great Depression, America held the election in 1932. The election featured Democrat Franklin Delano Roosevelt versus Republican Herbert Hoover. Roosevelt was a Democratic governor from New York who came from a wealthy and renowned family. He was the cousin of Theodore Roosevelt. As governor, Roosevelt was popular as a reformer. FDR fought poverty and unemployment in New York. That this administration has utterly and entirely failed, failed to meet the great emergency of modern times. On the other side was the Republican incumbent president of the United States, Herbert Hoover. His approval rating was in ruins, and Hoover had little chance of re-election. Herbert Hoover was blamed for worsening the Depression, and the American people wanted change. Franklin Delano Roosevelt beats Hoover by 7 million votes, creating a mandate for change. A mandate is when voters show overwhelming support for a candidate and his policies. This map shows a landslide victory for Roosevelt, winning 42 out of 48 states at the time. Franklin Delano Roosevelt is known as one of the greatest presidents in American history. FDR's greatest asset was his overwhelming optimism and confidence. His can-do attitude was exactly what Americans needed at the time. FDR was extremely charismatic and a master communicator who spoke to Americans as his friends. It is three months, my friend, since I have talked with the people of this country about our national problems. But during this period, many things have happened. And I'm glad to say that the major part of them have greatly helped the well-being of the average citizen. He was a cousin of Theodore Roosevelt, and like his cousin, wanted to use the presidency as an elevated office through which he could directly help the American people. Unlike Hoover, Franklin Roosevelt understood how bad the Depression was, and he was anxious to take action to help the American people. Before taking office, FDR began planning to fight the Depression. He convened an elite group of advisors known as the Brain Trust. This brain trust included lawyers, professors, economists, and business leaders. FDR designed a series of policies that would become known as the New Deal. New Deal programs would combat the economic problems of the Depression through public works and direct relief. FDR's New Deal had a series of goals, and they became known as the three R's. The first goal was relief, or providing aid to the needy. The second was recovery, or fixing the economy so it could grow again. And the third was reform to ensure that another depression would never happen again. On March 4, 1933, FDR is sworn in as the 32nd President of the United States. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed effort to convert retreat into advance. FDR immediately lets people know that he is ready to take action. We must act. We must act quickly. I shall ask the Congress for the one remaining instrument to meet the crisis. Broad executive power. In what's known as the 100 Days, or his first 100 days in office, FDR implemented over 15 New Deal programs that expanded the federal government's role in the national economy over an intense period from March to June in 1933. In an attempt to explain these programs to the American people, FDR uses a new technique called a fireside chat. Fireside chat is when FDR would speak over the radio waves to the American people to inform them on the actions he was taking and what it meant to them. My friends, I want to talk for a few minutes with the people of the United States about banking. To talk with the this helped to create a love for FDR because he was making a personal connection to the people and they felt that he was speaking directly to them. Roosevelt's first set of programs would focus on reforming the United States economy. Nowhere was this reform more needed than the banking sector. When the banking panics closed down the banks, it dried up the supply of money in the United States economy. Without money readily available, it was hard to borrow money and therefore businesses closed. It was also hard for consumers to spend money. FDR's first priority, therefore, was to stabilize the banks and restore faith in the financial sector. This begins with the bank holiday. One day after taking office, FDR ordered a bank holiday, closing all banks in order to stop panic withdrawals. FDR's next action was to sign the Emergency Banking Relief Act. Roosevelt authorized the Treasury to inspect all banks for stability, closing bad banks that couldn't cover withdrawals and allowing only strong banks to remain open. Roosevelt's next act was to sign the Glass-Steagall Act. The Glass-Steagall Act set up the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, also known as the FDIC. 
The FDIC insured accounts of $5,000 or more and protected people's money against bank closures. The FDIC still insures your money today whenever you deposit it in a bank. Here's how the FDIC works. If depositors were to take their cash and deposit it into a bank account and those banks were to fail, the federal government steps in and the FDIC refunds the depositors their money. Even if a bank were to shut down, people's money would be safe if the account is above $5,000. As a result of these bank reform programs, consumer confidence in the banking system was restored and Americans began depositing their savings back at the banks, making money available again. In order to prevent risky stock market practices that caused the Great Depression, FDR creates the Securities and Exchange Commission, also known as the SEC. The SEC regulated the stock market and made it illegal to rig the stock market with insider trading. The SEC prevented buying on margin and stock market speculation. FDR also had to provide relief for people in danger of losing their homes. In order to do this, he created the Federal Housing Administration, also known as the FHA. This insured home loans for Americans with good credit on tight budgets. The FHA still makes insured home loans for people today. The 100 Days also featured programs that Roosevelt passed in order to spur recovery of the economy. The first program focused on farmers and struggling agriculture. It was called the Agricultural Adjustment Act, also known as the AAA. Following World War I, there was a massive surplus of crops in the United States, causing crop prices to fall and making it harder for farmers to pay back their loans. The AAA paid farmers to leave a portion of their fields unseeded. Reducing the surplus of crops would then raise prices and increase farmers' income, making it easier for them to pay back their loans and stay on their land. In order to stimulate the economy of the Tennessee Valley, FDR creates the Tennessee Valley Authority. The TVA constructed dams in the impoverished Tennessee River Valley. It created jobs, provided flood control, irrigation, and cheap electricity. One of the centerpiece programs of the New Deal focused on struggling business in America. In order to help businesses, FDR signs the National Industrial Recovery Act, which establishes the National Recovery Administration, or the NRA. The NRA set price controls, wage levels, and work hours in order to promote fair competition and end layoffs. It also worked to foster cooperation between private businesses and government in order to end unemployment and create jobs. Businesses pledged to cooperate through the NRA and did so by showing the eagle flag in their windows. Consumers were more enticed to buy goods from these companies because it meant that those companies were creating jobs for Americans who were out of work. FDR thought if business and government could cooperate together, the economy could recover much more quickly. FDR attempted to provide direct relief by creating programs aimed at creating jobs through public works. FDR believed the government could create jobs building hospitals, roads, parks, and other public goods in order to provide relief to the people. The first such program was the Civilian Conservation Corps, or the CCC. The CCC gave jobs to young men ages 18 to 25, building roads and public parks. Wages were sent home to families and workers were fed and housed in camps. These workers would get $5 for themselves and send $25 home to help provide for their families. It's very good to be here at these Virginia CCC camps. I wish I could see them all over the country. I wish that I could take a couple of months off from the White House and come down here and live with them because I know I'd get full of health the way they have. The only difference is that they've put on an average of about 12 pounds apiece since they got here, and I'm trying to take off 12 pounds. <laughs> The next program that FDR used to provide relief was the Public Works Administration, also known as the PWA. The PWA gave states money in order to create jobs to construct schools and other public buildings. With the federal government providing money directly to states, the states themselves could create jobs locally. Next is the Civilian Works Administration, or the CWA. The CWA created 4 million jobs in construction projects and for school teachers. More than just job creation, FDR also wanted to provide relief to the needy. He authorized the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, or the FERA. The FERA granted $500 million in food, clothes, shelter, and work programs for the unemployed, sick, and elderly. And finally, Roosevelt wanted to help people struggling to pay their home loans. He created the Homeowners Loan Corporation, or the HOLC. This provided new low-interest home loans to Americans who were struggling to make their payments. They could restructure their interest rate, making their home payment more affordable. With the inauguration of Franklin Delano Roosevelt as president, there was definitely a change in Washington. The programs of the New Deal were many and far-reaching. Some of them worked, and some did not. But as Roosevelt once said, it is common sense to take a method and try it. 
If it fails, admit it frankly and try another. But above all, try something. Americans were glad that someone was finally trying, and they were a little bit more optimistic about the future ahead. This great nation will endure as it has endured, will revive and will prosper. Happy days are here.